Well, good morning. It's uh, Sunday morning. I think it's uh, sept uh, November 17th, and I am at Rocky Neck State Park this morning. Uh, it's about 35 degrees. There's some beautiful sun right now. They say some clouds are about to roll in this afternoon, but I want to start a little series now where I kind of document what it's like to go out and grab some wildlife photos. So at this park right now, there's a lot of uh, crows. There's a couple crows over there. But um, there's blue herons that are flying around here. There's mallard ducks, um, there's kingfishers, which are my favorite, but I'm gonna try to go out and, and grab some photos and do a continuing series here on what it's like to grab some wildlife photos. So let's see if we can get anything today. The first bird of the day is this great blue heron. It's a pretty distinctive bird as its color and size give it away. It's one of my favorites. It can reach four and a half feet tall, have a potential wingspan of six and a half feet, and can weigh up to seven pounds. I promise you it wasn't me that startled it, it was the ducks. But don't worry, another one comes flying in, showing off that full belly of fish and lands ever so gracefully in the salt marsh. This is how a great blue heron hunts its food. It stands in the water on its tall, skinny legs, looking down at the fish, and when it decides to strike, it slams its head in the water, lightning fast, hoping to come up with one. Unfortunately, this guy came up empty-handed, but his friend was able to get one. Shifting gears here, we have this female mallard just sitting on the beach, and just like us humans, she gets hot too and has to cool off in the water. But here comes another one flying in from the west side of the park. She looks like she's about to land on some ice, but it's actually water. And here's a male mallard cruising along the beach looking for some ladies. Luck didn't go his way, but he ended up giving me the most beautiful photograph of the day. Look at the sunlight hitting that yellow beak, that green head, the white ring around its neck, the blue on its wings. And if you look really close in this photograph, you can actually see the water droplets coming off its feet and tail. And here we have the kingfisher, which is one of my most favorite birds in this area. And pardon my shaky hand on this long range video clip, but you can see how the kingfisher dives off the osprey stand, hitting the water beak first, looking for a fish. I only got this photograph today of the kingfisher and it's gray and doesn't look all that good, but I wanna show you a couple from the spring because this bird is so good looking. Look at the beak on this guy. And what's better than one kingfisher? How about two of them? So that ends today's adventures from Rocky Neck State Park uh, over here in Niantic, Connecticut. Saw some animals, some pretty standard ones, got a couple decent photos, maybe one that I might post to my Instagram. Um, but we'll see where this video takes us next. Now let's take a trip to Darlington, Maryland, a trip to the Conowingo Dam. The Conowingo Dam is almost world famous for bald eagles, and my first experience here came in the spring. I thought it was so amazing that I actually planned to drive home around being able to stop in here one morning. The last trip I made was at the end of November though. November, December, January, and February are the busiest times at the Conowingo Dam due to the rivers up north freezing and the eagles migrating down south looking for food. Let me tell you a little bit about the dam. So this is it, right here is the Conowingo Dam. This is Bald Eagle Central right here. So um, I'll give you a little explanation on it from how I understand it. So you've got an, uh, an upper river that's up there and then you've got this lower river that's right here. So the fish come through, they go through these turbines right there that provide power for the city or the town, whatever this may be. Meanwhile, there's eagles that are just you know everywhere over here waiting for the fish to go through to get stunned and then they just come down and psh, scoop up the fish. So believe it or not, I actually slept in my car on this trip. I left my house on a Monday night and drove four of the four and a half hours and stopped at a nice looking rest stop to spend the night in the back of my car. As you can see, I fogged up the windows, but I was pretty comfortable. I got to the dam just after six in the morning that day. The sun that time of year comes up just after seven, but I needed to get a parking spot and a place for my tripod. And as you can see, right out of the gates, the eagles were flying around. In all of the world of photography, there's nothing more exciting than lining up a bald eagle in the viewfinder for me. This is such a great shot of the sun and the mist coming off the river. Shortly after that, a bald eagle downriver scooped up a fish and was heading right towards me. This isn't a great photograph by any means, and I never like my animals backlit with the sun behind them, but this photograph just gets me. I know this photo has a funny crop to it, but it's the only one where the light is directly hitting its eyeballs. And here's another one. It's not my favorite photo, as you can see the shadow across the face, but it's okay. Now let's talk about eagles scooping up the fish out of the river. As I was saying earlier, when the fish comes through the dam, they get temporarily stunned, and that's when the eagles fly over and scoop them out of the water. Check this guy going in for a pickup and notice the other bald eagles waiting right behind him to come in and steal the fish. 
Here's another one that's super far away, but just after his talons hit the water, you can see the fish flop up behind him. He got one. And yes, just like us humans, after they're done eating, they got to handle business too. Now here's my favorite video of the day. Look at this bald eagle banking and making a dive towards the water for a fish. He is past vertical on the descent here. Look how fast he's moving, but notice how he's barely moving his wings on the way down. He came up empty-handed, but this is fascinating. Since there wasn't much action over the river, I decided to take a cruise around the parking lot. A lot of eagles will grab fish out of the river and then hang out in the trees over the parking lot, eating them or just getting some sun. Let's take a closer look at this guy. He was hanging out in a tree just about 20 feet over the ground. And here he goes for a flyby. You see where his forehead comes down and meets his beak? There's a slight little indent there. It's okay, I think he's pretty good looking still and I would photograph him all day. Now this is great. I watched this eagle come from a different area of the dam and perch himself in a tree eating his fish. You can see here that he starts to do a little bit of his call, but he doesn't fully get it all the way out. Notice the chunks of fish going in his mouth? I ended up with this photograph. Here's another bald eagle in the parking lot, and if you take a good look at this eagle, you can see that he still has some black spots on his head, which means he's just coming into adulthood. And here are a few just hanging out in the dam, and here's one just hanging out with a great blue heron. The Conowingo Dam is a busy place. You can see photographers everywhere, all kinds of gear and clothing, and it's the type of place where I get gas. Not that kind of gas, but gear acquisition syndrome. Now let's concentrate on some stills, as that is the main reason why I came here today. Look at this juvenile that I photographed earlier in the day. Look at the underbelly of this guy, and look at the moon in the corner of the photograph. I go back and forth between enjoying photographing the adults and the juveniles. There's something about all those white feathers mixed in with the brown feathers under the juveniles that excites me. Here are several belly shots of these guys flying around today. Now let's check out some adults. Look at this one just ascending from the river with a fish. I remember this eagle coming towards me and thinking, please come this way, please come this way. And sure enough, it did. Just look at that. Look at that bald eagle. Look at that pointy beak, those piercing eyes, and look at those talons wrapped around that poor fish. And what makes these photographs even better is the sun. The eagle is flying directly into it, which is lighting him up perfectly. Now remember earlier when I was talking about how bald eagles steal fish from each other at the Conowingo Dam? Check out this sequence, which is the only one I got of the day. A juvenile eagle scooped up a fish out of the water, and an adult came in right after he got it to steal it from him. These photographs happened within six tenths of a second according to my metadata. These are not the best photos as they are heading away from the sun, but you still get that unique perspective of these birds fighting for food. And here the juvenile flies off looking all defeated, but he gave us a nice little head turn to get his photograph. And here comes another beautiful adult bald eagle flying into my view. Again, this is another eagle that is just coming into adulthood as you can see a little bit of black on his head and on the tips of his tail. And this guy just looks like he's floating up in the sky and that's where I ended my day at the Conowingo Dam. I'm lucky enough to live in a nice wooded area where wildlife can catch me off guard sometimes. While standing in my driveway recently, I heard the very unique call of the pileated woodpecker. I got in my car, drove down the driveway, made a left turn on the road, and there it was going back and forth across the road. It's a big woodpecker as it's the size of a small hawk. I could be wrong, but as I was watching this bird, I was wondering if it actually eats some of the wood that it breaks off the tree. Check out the cool red markings on its head. Owls. Let's talk about owls. As much as the bald eagle is my favorite raptor to photograph, the owl is a close second. Check out this owl pellet. This is a good sign when you're going into the woods looking for owls. Look at all the hair and bones inside that thing. And I promise you, I didn't buy this one from some kit somewhere. I found it on the trail. Making my way into the woods looking for this owl, I see this beautiful eight-point buck. He was pretty calm and let me take a couple nice photos of him. Look at the size of his neck. Here we have a great blue heron just hanging out on an osprey nest, and I'm pretty sure he's yelling at his partner to bring him some food. Now here we go. This is what I came to the woods for. Although this is such a crappy and terrible day, the scene doesn't get any better. Two adult great horned owls just hanging out in a tree looking all around. If you look very closely, you notice how the owls blink with one eye at a time. I thought this was pretty cool. I haven't spent a whole lot of time with owls, and this could be routine for them, but I'm not sure. 
I took a couple photographs this day, but nothing came out good and they aren't even worth showing. Check out a couple of these photographs from the summertime of these guys. Look at those eyes. And look at the size of the feet on this guy. Now here's where the story gets fun. For many years I have heard and noticed barred owls on my property, but I've never been able to photograph them because I haven't had the setup. This one was sitting in the tree on the right side of my driveway one night, and it was the first time I got to photograph one at my house. Check out how calm he is and how much he can turn his neck. I think most people know this, but owls do not move their eyeballs in their eye sockets. Their eyes move with their head movements. And here's one on a super windy day, just hanging out on a tree, looking all calm, just staring right at me. And here are a couple nice stills I got of him. Just look at that. Isn't that amazing? My father was outside blowing leaves. It was so windy, and you can see him just sitting there relaxing. And this owl here swooped in front of my car one night in Old Lyme and went right into the woods. I was able to turn around quick enough, go back, and got this shot of him through the woods. Hey guys, just wanted to check in here real quick and say thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it this far. Uh, but if you like wildlife and you like things that fly and raptors and stuff like that, I think you would have enjoyed this video. So stay tuned. I think I'm going to continue this series. I still have to talk about one of the oldest documented ospreys in the United States that I got to photograph actually. And I want to tell my snowy owl story again because that was a pretty cool story. I got some great photographs from that. It's the day after Christmas. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Uh, Jill and I are off to Maine this morning, and I'm going to make a video up there. We're going to go ski Sugarloaf, and I got the new GoPro Hero 7, so uh, should be some pretty cool footage. Thanks, everybody.